Hey guys, Keith here with another feature update. I wanted to share with you um, some stuff that I've been doing around uh, making it easier to bring in singing faces for matrices. Um, it's a side effect of uh, Ed Smith's project to get a whole bunch of songs, um, uh, lyric tracks done. Um, there's also been a bunch of chatter around uh, singing faces um, and a whole bunch of work has been done to enhance the library of available singing faces. There's a few problems with them and I'll talk about that. Um, but uh, it was also apparent that we could make this a lot easier and there's been a few changes over the last uh, couple of releases which have made it a little bit easier but it's still hard to go and find a good singing face uh, for your tree or your matrix etc and so um, I've been doing some work and basically that work involves first of all building a library. Um, the library although it's hosted um, on the Nutcracker servers I'm happy to take contributions but let me talk about what's involved in actually making a contribution. So the first thing you need to do is you need to be providing me with a zip file if you want to provide a face. Um, that zip file give it a name now in this case it's called odd face zero one and contained within it is a set of files now there must be just a set of files there must not be a folder or anything else it must be like that the files all must start with exactly the same name as the zip file exactly the same case followed by an underscore it then has to be followed by a, a phoneme and these are the phonemes that are recognized within X lights on the faces dialogue. So if you go into the faces dialogue on X lights, um, it has all of these phonemes here and notice that there are two, four, six, eight, ten of them. And you must have at least 10 files here, one with each of the phonemes. Um, then there's another underscore and then there's either the letters EO, which means eyes open, or EC, which means eyes closed. So this file's got 11 because it's got one eyes closed. Now, technically, it's only, I think, necessary to provide eyes closed for the rest phoneme because that's typically when um, X lights will blink your face. So um, in this case, it's just been provided with an eyes closed um, uh, for the rest face. Um, the final extension can be JPEG, uh, PNG or GIF, it doesn't really matter, you guys choose. Um, but the file must look exactly like this, right, exactly like this. The name must match the zip file name, it must be an underscore, it must be the phoneme, the phoneme must match exactly the phoneme in X-Lights. The case is not important but the name matters, the underscore matters and then eyes open and eyes closed. If any files are missing from here, if any files are not named according to the standard, then they won't be accepted. They will just be rejected. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life uh, running around renaming files inside zip files because the submitter couldn't follow the, the guidelines. So crystal clear, get that right. Okay, so that's how you would submit the, the files. There is then a set of metadata we need, okay, data that describes the face. Um, this I'll be a little bit more flexible about how it's provided, but um, basically this is what it needs to be. So um, it needs to be put into a category. You'll be able to see the categories in a minute in the UI. Um, you can, we can add additional categories. So if, if you come up with something that's radically new that doesn't really fit well into its own, into any of the existing categories, and it's significant enough from a, you know, it, we're likely to have more faces in that category that we would want to add it. Uh, you need to give it a name. The name doesn't have to be unique, um, but it should be something that at least helps people understand what it is. Um, if we know who drew the face, I'd, I'd love to be able to attribute um, the face to a particular artist. Um, don't worry about the links and the image files. I will grab one of the images out of the zip file and turn it into the actual image that is representative for the face. I then need you to, to specify how wide and how high the image is. So this is the size of the image file and you can find that using Windows or Mac. It'll tell you how big your particular image is. You can then optionally, and by optionally I mean you can either say minus one, in which case we don't specify a minimum width or height. But this is the minimum width that the model that you place the image on needs to be for the image to look half decent. 
Um, one of the challenges with moving images, putting images onto models is um, if you put a small image on a large model, it's going to either blow up and look really, uh, really blocky and not necessarily great. But because um, at the end of the day, um, you don't have to scale it, you can just center it that's generally okay. The problem more becomes when you've got a really large image and some of the images that people have posted are really large, i.e. hundreds of pixels across, hundreds of pixels high. When you take something that is that large with fine line details and you scale it down and try to put it on a tree that's 12 strings or 16 strings wide by 50 strings high, quite frankly, it looks crap. Um, and so, by specifying a minimum width and a minimum height, you're able to say, hey, if you place this image onto a model that's any smaller than this, it's not gonna look very good. Um, and you'll see in a minute that I've got a filter that you can optionally apply, which will filter out any images which don't look great once they've been scaled down beyond a certain distance. So this is the data that I expect people to provide uh, me with. Now with the minimum width and the minimum height, very few of these images actually have that set. Um, if you are using a face in, in X lights and you notice that when you place it onto your model, your model is, it just looks garbage and you can tell me what you think the minimum width and minimum height is, I'm happy to update those and, and upload those so that other people can take advantage. But I'm not gonna go through and try to work out what that minimum size is for each and every um, face definition. Uh, I, I have better things to do. And there was enough work getting the 73 that I've already got into X lights going. Um, so the rest of it's gonna be a bit of a crowdsourcing activity. Now, if you submit a set of images and you don't come and you suggest a name and suggest a artist or specify the artist if you know it, um, a category and the width and the height, um, then again, I'm, I'm just not going to look at them. I'll just, they'll, they'll just go in the garbage bin. I'm not going to spend uh, the rest of my life trying to classify and upload these things. Um, so it's, it's on the submitter to get that right. And I would encourage you to do so, so that others can take advantage of it. So what's the point? Well, let's have a look at what it actually looks like. Now, there's, there's one thing that I don't like about it at the moment, and that is that you have to actually add a model before you can go and browse the library. And that's kind of a little bit silly because you may not know exactly which um, face you want to download. Um, if you want to, um, I've got an existing face here. If you want to go and browse the library, you could in theory click download images here and you will get to browse the library. Um, but if you click OK when you exit that dialogue, it's going to overwrite all of this. So you'd have to make sure you press cancel. So let's pretend we do know what we want to do. Let's pretend I want to put a skull on. Uh, Actually, let's pretend I want to put a gingerbread man because I know there's a gingerbread man in the library. So we're going to add it and let's call him gingerbread man. Okay, we click okay. And um, as you would expect, it comes up as it normally would. If we go to the matrix, you get the download images button. When you click the download images button, what it does is it reaches out over the internet to the Nutcracker site and downloads the library of images that are available. And you can see that there's a whole bunch of categories here um, and you can browse through them. You can just open this up and, and skirt through it and you can see a copy or a sample from that library of each of the images. Each and every one of these is a singing face, meaning there's a library of at least 10 images sitting behind it with the mouse in all the different uh, sizes. Uh, you can see down here, it tells you how big that image is. So this one is 236 wide by 330 high. That's pretty high, right? That's pretty big, right? That's uh, 330 is uh, like 10, um, actually no, it's 20 P10 panels if you don't want to shrink it at all. Um, yeah, on a virtual matrix, even on a virtual matrix, this would be considered a large virtual matrix. So to be honest, I'm not sure how useful this particular singing face is. Um, I don't know how far down you could scale it before you started to lose all of the detail um, on the scarf and the hat and everything else. And so this is a bit of a problem. And as people go away and start to think about creating these things, I'd encourage you to think very carefully about how big you make the images. 
sure it's easy to make large images because you know there's lots of art that's out there that you can cat grab and adapt and posting the mouth on is pretty easy to do but personally and let me remove the filter here because there's a, there's a snowman in here that's been filtered out uh, this snowman here is a much, much, much more useful snowman. He's only 50 wide and 40 high. I happen to know that, you know, if you scale him down to 18, it's about the limit of how far you can go before the mouth starts to become indistinct and, and when it sings, it doesn't look that great. I've set a minimum width of 25. That's probably a little aggressive. Given the amount of black space over here, you might be able to go a little bit less than 25. Um, and still manage to squeak him onto your model. But this is, to me, is a much more useful singing face. Um, on your fancy, big, large P10 panels, maybe you want to go a bit larger, but if you've got a tree or you've got a, just an old pixel matrix, which is, you know, 50 by 24 or 48 by 24, etc., this sort of model is going to be perfect for something like that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of these things in here. Um, what do we say? We're going to do a ginger man, man. I happen to know he's in the other category. In fact, there he is. Um, perfectly designed for a tree, 20 wide, 50 high. Okay, he's going to be a little compressed sideways, but my tree is 150 high, so he's going to be stretched and elongated. That looks good. So when I'm ready for that, I click insert face. Um, notice at the moment everything over here is empty. And when I click insert face, it downloads it and uploads it all. Now, it looks like there's a problem in this model because the FV didn't match. So I'm going to have to go and have a look at how I've screwed that zip file up. I've probably um, not named him correctly. Let's have a quick look. There he is, gingerbread man. Yeah, the F's missing. That's not good. I'll have to fix that one. Doesn't matter. Um, but you can see that it's filled it all in. Now, if there was an eyes closed, it would have filled in the appropriate eyes closed as well. And then you would just click OK and everything would be done. Um, that face is now defined and you can go and create a sequence. Um, we can go to my mega tree. Uh, arch tree, there it is. We can grab our faces effect. Uh, arch tree, let's get it on the right one. There's our gingerbread man. Let's bring up our model preview. Oops, so that was our model preview. Um, oh, there he is. Okay. Um, and there he is. Um, not quite sure why the AI didn't, you know, the AI does render. So there he is on, on my tree, and it's as simple as that. No more hunting around forums, Facebook groups, uh, file sections, Google Drives to find the images. Um, they can all be downloaded directly here. Now, what happens to them? That's a good question. Um, if we go to uh, my show directory, um, it's created this folder called downloaded faces and you will find all of those face files have been placed into that folder. So somewhere in here will be the gingerbread man files. There they all are. And so they've all been downloaded in there. And obviously um, the model definition has been uh, set up to hook two of them. That means if I now go and package this sequence, those files will all be correctly packaged and shared if you're moving between computers using different drive names all of those things will also be corrected automatically so yeah uh, hopefully that makes setting up your singing faces a lot easier please remember if you are looking to submit faces um, yeah I know the rules are a bit brutal but but you know I really can't be doing all the work for you um, this is a case where crowdsourcing works but only it works if um, if I hold everyone to account to actually deliver the zip files with the right files with the right names and the right metadata so that I can easily update that XML file um, and make those available so that others can download them. Thanks, guys.